Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. You know, as we look in the data center today, and we look at sites that are doing like social discovery and just receiving a lot of different types of content, distributing and managing that content, making it easy to search and find for the users is becoming an increasing challenge that's leading today to relatively complex architectures. And there's now a, a move afoot to try to simplify that and make it a much easier environment to manage. Joining me to help with that conversation, I've invited T.W. Cook. He is the Vice President of Engineering at Coringo. Thanks for joining us today, Thank T.W. You. Right, before we jump into this, tell us a little bit about Coringo. Coringo is a software-defined object storage company. So we're building extremely large-scale object storage um, platform. So um, when, when we look at this problem here, I think you've got sort of the old way or the current way yeah. maybe of, of how companies that are doing this social discovery uh, aspect. Uh, walk us through what we're, we're dealing with today. Okay. So the shape of it varies a little bit depending on the company, but the basic idea is they've got a web server, some kind of an app server, some kind of a relational database behind it. And that's just dealing with the information about whether that's people or maybe videos you're looking for or whatever. Okay. But in order to serve up the content, the content could be a bunch of images. So if it's a social discovery site, there are usually lots of pictures uh, right. of this person. Uh, if it's, um, there are similar sites that in business. So it could be scanned prescriptions okay. uh, from, say, pharmacy records or something okay. like that. So if I'm looking for, like, say, everybody that has blue eyes that lives in Fort Worth, Texas. Right. So yeah. you're going to basically go do a search on relational data information. But when you get back that record about this person, there's a lot of images. And the images really turn out to be a challenge. So usually what people do is build a parallel track through here. Gotcha. They've got a set of, sometimes it's file systems, it's usually it's relational databases. They've got an application that can go retrieve those images from the relational databases and then turn them into something they can serve up on the web. Might be the same web server, might be a parallel one. The big problem with all of this is that for a really large site, some of these sites have upwards of three billion images. Yeah. So, You've got to clone a lot of SQL databases. Once you store in one of them, you've got to clone it right. to all of there's them. There's not so just gotta, two on the whiteboard. There's 2,000. There's, 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 yeah. Well, dozens or, yeah, or dozens, so anyway. Yeah. And you've got a synchronization problem behind them. You've got to clone this. So you've got a lot of infrastructure to manage here. Right. So complexity and management and, and clearly cost is probably a big deal, right? Cost is a huge deal because those are expensive servers. Right. So cost is a big part of this. The other part is just the user experience. There's a fair amount of extra latency to go yeah. Get the image out Good of here, point. turn it into something you'd serve up on the web, right. and then get it back into this. Okay. So at Coringo, you guys have discovered a way that you can really solve some of these problems and take out that latency and complexity of right. management, right? Right. I was just um, visiting with one of our customers who's, who's basically in this business. And they went from, they originally had file systems, then they went to SQL databases. They could never get them to synchronize. And plus, they've got an additional data center because they have to be redundant. Mm -hmm. So they've got not only local copies to synchronize, but remote ones. So what they've done is they've basically replaced all of this with a swarm cluster. Because a swarm cluster is fundamentally an extremely parallel web server. We speak HTTP. Right. If you know the name of an object, you have a URL that when you hand it to the, to the database or the, uh, to the object storage, what you get back is the object ready to deliver on the web. So what these guys have done is take all of this tier here and get rid of it. They've replaced all of that layer with a single swarm cluster. So down here, they've got a Coringo swarm cluster. Okay. So it's extremely parallel. So all of that multiple levels of replication are inherent in this. Right. If they need more bandwidth, they can simply boot more servers into the cluster. Right. They get redundancy, so the amount of replication that they need to get their performance up. Uh, the default turns out to work, but it's tunable. So what they really do is they generate an HTML page with an image tag that is the name of that. That gets served up on the web. Right. Because this is a web server, when the browser tries to fetch that image, it just goes grabs it straight out of Swarm. So all of those layers are gone. Their latency and thus their user experience are improved. Their administrative complexity has gone way down. They don't have to worry about all that replication. Plus, they run two different data centers. So they've got an East Coast, um, Mid Coast uh, set of data centers, and they can use swarm feeds to replicate. So those two swarm clusters are continually, instantly in sync. 
So they don't worry about any of that infrastructure management that they had right. to do. So if one data center goes down, they can keep right on going. They can run their entire load out of one of these clusters. No one, their customers don't know anything. All the content's there, all the content's on the other side. So peak load's not a problem because they've got plenty of capacity. Right. So let's talk real quickly what's inside a swarm cluster. It's essentially a, a group of servers that, that are right. commodity, and inside of those servers is uh, storage capacity of different types. Right. And then the, your guy's software essentially brings them together into a manageable cluster, right? That's right. So swarm basically consists of commodity x86 servers uh, with storage. You boot those into Swarm. They join together uh, and form a cluster. Mm -hmm. If you, there's no real complexity to adding a server. You just boot it into the same, boot it from the right. same storage node. And those servers can be of different types as generations right. evolve and stuff. They can. In fact, one of our customers who with a who uses this same model did a complete hardware refresh of their storage cluster without ever shutting it down. Huh? They had a foot. Uh, they were. They start off with little 1U servers, right. which are extremely resilient because there's a small unit of failure. Right. They take a lot of floor space. Sure. They realized their floor space charges were their dominant cost. Right. So they decided to replace them with a cluster made of extremely dense servers. Yep. So bigger so, U but more capacity per Exactly U, right. Okay. So what they did is they started wheeling in a couple of new servers, added them to the cluster, started retiring old servers, and over the course of a few weeks they gradually took all of the old servers off, added the new servers, by the time it was done, they had completely refreshed the entire hardware for this cluster without ever shutting it down with zero downtime, zero uh, impact on their customers. Well, and really, I mean, I guess the system kind of automatically migrated, but no forced migration on their part, right? If you bring a new server into Swarm, it will automatically balance the content over it. Right. But you can also take a server for maintenance purposes or whatever and say, retire. Right. And what that's going to do is cause it to get rid of its content in an orderly fashion, distribute it out over the rest of the cluster, and then shut itself down. At that point, you can turn it off and throw it away. Perfect. Whatever you want to do. So, well, TW, thanks. This is really, I think, important for these uh, sort of social discovery sites. And really, anybody that you had said is dealing with content sort of distribution issues, sure. the, the ability to simplify that. And I think, really, if you're an IT guy and you have this that former infrastructure that we had out there, this might be something to look at to really help simplify things. There's a lot of things that have that same pattern right. where you've got, you're managing a lot of content, whether that's images, that could be audio, that could be video. Uh, if you've got a lot of it, you need to access it in parallel. So you've built all that infrastructure. This is a candidate for replacing all of that. Perfect. Well, TW, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. So there you have it. That's a way to really solve the content distribution problem. And as we expand and people start to capture more and more content, this is going to be a problem that's going to you know, be against every data center. So the ability to have these sort of solutions at your disposal is incredibly powerful. Thank you for joining us. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland.